Here we're going to take a look at how we can use what's called a probability tree uh, to find the probability of a certain event um, and a number of outcomes. Um, so we're just going to jump in with an example here. Let's say I have a spinner here. Um, you notice I have three different colors on here, and this would be something you'd spin the little, uh, say there's a little arrow on it that spins around, and you get either, we'll call them A, B, or C as your results. Um, what we can do is we can make a probability tree. So we're going to go through the process of figuring out what all the possible outcomes are. So let's say when you spin it the first time, you could get either an A, a B, or a C. Then we're going to spin it a second time. Let's say we're going to spin it, spin two, we'll label it. On spin two, you could either get a A, a B, or a C. Okay, on spin B, we could either get, or sorry, after we spin and we get a B on the second spin, you could either get an A, a B, or a C again. And again, at the very bottom here, if you spun a C on the first time, the second time, you could either get an A, a B, or a C. And this is because they're independent events. They don't matter. Um, they don't impact each other one spin to the next. Um, and, and we can look at ultimately what their final, what the final outcome is. Say we care about... Um, what, you're, what you get in both spins. So on the first spin, you would get A, A, okay? Because we have an A here and an A here. Uh, second spin, we can get an A, B. We can keep going down the list, we get an A, C here. Now here we would get a B, A, a B, B, a B, C. And in this last set here, we would get a C, A, a C, B, and a C, C. Um, what I really want to know here, what my question might be if I get a spinner question like this is, what is the probability of getting uh, the same letter twice in a row? Um, and if that's kind of the question that we get, we can take a look at here um, how we would get that. You could get, uh, here's one way you could do it, you could get an AA, you could get a BB, or you could get a CC. So this means getting an A twice, a B twice, and a C twice. And we can look at that probability and how many ways are there? Um, it appears that there are three ways to do that. Um, how many total ways, how many total outcomes are there from this spinner experiment? It looks like that there is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And we know from our probability from the previous video, our probability is just equal to the, the favorable outcomes. In this case, outcomes that have the same letter. And we know that we have three of those. And we know the total outcomes is 9. So we can say that our probability is 3 over 9. We always want to put this into lowest terms. So we know that this would be 1 out of 3. And remember, I can turn my probability into um, a decimal. So 1 over 3 would be 0.3 repeating. Or we could say it's 33.3 repeating percent. So what that means is that your probability of getting the same letter twice by doing two spins with this spinner is 33.3%. Let's take a look at this example here. Um, say you're going to flip a coin three times. What is the probability of getting at least two heads? And it starts to get a little tricky when we start to get into three flips, four flips, even up to 100 flips. So we're going to take a look at using a uh, probability tree to solve this problem. So I know my possible outcomes for each flip. So I'm going to put first here. My first flip, you could get either a head or you could get a tails. From that flip, we could go to our second flip. And you could either get a head or a tail. And then also the same result here because they are independent events. You get a head or a tail here. And then let's say on our third flip, you can get either a head or a tail, and a head or a tail, and a head or a tail. And you start to see that uh, this just kind of gets really long and exhausting. Um, and we'll find better ways to do this later on, but this is a great way to start things out. So our outcome here Based off of our three flips, if we take a look at this, in this one we'd have a head, a head, and a head. So our outcome is HHH. Um, it's easier just to use abbreviations for these. Our second one would be HHT. HHT. And we can keep going down the list here. HTH, HTT, THH, THT, um, TTH. 
and T, T, T. And this sounds really confusing. It doesn't really mean much until we realize what these mean. Um, so this one right here would mean you got three heads in a row. We could figure out the probability of that, but that's not what the question is asking us. The question is asking us to find the probability of getting at least two heads. Um, so let's go through and let's circle which ones could have at least two heads. This one has three, so that's at least two. This one has two. That meets our thing. Heads, tail, heads has two. Heads, tails, tails does not. Tails, heads, heads does. Tails, heads, tails, nope. Tails, tails, heads. Nope. Tails, tails, tails. No. So it looks like we have four favorable outcomes. Four favorable outcomes. And out of our total number of outcomes, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible outcomes. If we remember from before, the way that we find our probability is by going our probability is equal to our favorable outcomes, which is four, over our total outcomes, which is eight. And we know if we simplify this down, this will become one half. We can also turn this into a decimal, which is 0 0.5, or a percent, which is 50%. And there we have it. It looks like if you're going to flip a coin three times, the probability, the likelihood of getting at least two heads is 50%. That's a pretty good chance.